You're listening to episode number two of Overprescribed. Welcome to Overprescribed, the podcast raising America's awareness on pharmaceutical medications, all in an effort to improve consumer health and reduce the preventable harm and death that is sometimes caused by prescription drugs. My name is Mika, and I'm your host, and on today's show, We're talking about the top seven things everyone should know about their drug labels, because I want every person in America to take these drug labels seriously, to read them and to ask the questions that will hold everyone involved in our healthcare system accountable and actionable to ensure you're safe. Now, when I talk about drug labels, I'm talking about the labels that come in your drugs packaging or the medication guides that can be accessed on the FDA's website. Not the slip of quick information that is sometimes stapled to your bag when you pick up your medicine at the pharmacy. So for example, if you use a big box chain pharmacy like CVS, they'll likely put your medication in a bag, attach a one sheet folded paper called a patient prescription information sheet to the bag and then staple all of that together. On that patient prescription information sheet, you'll find basic information, all written in easy to understand layman's terms so that most patients who read it will understand it. You'll find information about what the drug is meant to treat, a section on side effects, precautions, drug interactions, even a section on overdose information and what to do if you overdose, as well as notes like standard language on not sharing the medication with others, talking with your doctor if you suspect side effects or will be taking the medication long term. And you'll find missed dose information um, as well as how to store the medicine. And while this basic sheet of information from the pharmacist is great and you should read it, what I want you to put even more emphasis on is the drug label that is largely written by the pharmaceutical company and approved by the FDA for use and distribution in the drug packaging. Why? Because it is in that labeling that you'll find the more comprehensive information than the basic patient prescription information sheet. And if you're like me, you want all the information you can get about a drug before you take that very first dose. Now, these more detailed labels are more geared towards your healthcare practitioner because there's a lot more technical and scientific information included, but there's still some valuable nuggets of information on them that will absolutely help you, the consumer, to be informed and you should read them too. My favorite repository of these comprehensive drug labels, which are being called medication guides on the FDA's website, can be found at www.accessdata.fda.gov forward slash scripts forward slash C-D-E-R forward slash D-A-F. I'll refer to this site throughout this episode as simply the accessdata.fda.gov website, and I'll make sure to include the full link in the show notes. The labels you can find at accessdata.fda.gov typically include the following sections. So warnings slash box warnings, indications and usage, dosage and administration, dosage forms and strengths, contraindications, warnings and precautions, adverse reactions, drug interactions, information on use in specific populations, overdosage, descriptions about the medicine, clinical pharmacology, non-clinical toxicology, clinical studies, supplied and storage information, as well as patient counseling information. Okay, without further delay, let's get into that list of the top seven things that every consumer should know about their drug labels. Number seven, you should receive a drug label every time. True story, I recently went to a pharmacist to pick up medicine from my husband and there was nothing available to us. So check your bag before leaving the pharmacy. If you don't have one, when you get home, contact your pharmacist. And let's say you can't make it back to the pharmacy, but you have access to the internet. 
then you can go right to that accessdata.fda.gov website. And as a matter of fact, you may want to do that anyway, even if you have information coming back with you from the pharmacist. And I'll get into what I mean by that as we climb further up the list of the top seven things everyone should know about the drug labels. Number six, you should read your drug labels every time. So not only are you going to receive one every time, but you also want to read it every single time. This should go without saying, but I can't tell you how many times people, including myself, may not have read them. And I've changed my practice on this now, but back in the day, if my doctor, nurse, or physician assistant prescribed something to me, I took it without question or fear and with complete and full trust. And so I may have skimmed it, but I didn't read it nearly as much as I read them now. Now I know that there's information on the label that could save my life and I read them and I highly advise you to do the same thing. Number five, take a look at the patient counseling information section. Now, I don't have a copy of every single drug label that comes with the actual drug packaging in front of me, but I can tell you that the ones at the accessdata.fda.gov website tend to follow a certain template with great consistency. And on these labels, you find at the very end, a section called patient counseling information. I find this section of information helpful and very relevant because it is pretty much the playbook of what the drug manufacturer and the FDA consider to be approved and relevant information that your healthcare provider should be sharing with you. The listing of information in this patient counseling information section is really interesting to me because it tells a person what their healthcare provider should tell them about this drug. And in an ideal world, before that patient ever takes the drug, but Let's say you're also like me, or you've had experiences like I have, people in my family, and your visits with your healthcare provider are arguably very short face-to-face visits. And the details about a prescription drug during that visit is relatively minimal. Maybe you'll get a sentence or two about the side effects, why they're prescribing it to you. Uh, Chances are all of these things in the patient counseling information section are not going to be addressed. And I'm saying this because from the ones that I've seen, the honest truth is that this list can be quite long. So for example, I'm looking at the drug label or medication guide from accessdata.fda.gov for a drug called Invocamed. It's initially a drug that was approved to be marketed and sold in the U.S. back in 2014. It's an oral tablet, a combination of canagliflozin and metformin hydrochloride, and it's approved to treat a particular group of type 2 diabetic patients. Now, when looking at the list of things under the patient counseling information section, it's quite long, and God bless the healthcare provider that addresses each of these bullets point by point with the patient because it just doesn't seem likely to happen in a regular doctor visit unless your healthcare provider is literally looking at this long list while take it, talking with you and ensuring that they address every single one of them. So anyway, my point is that as a patient and a consumer of this drug, you have the opportunity to almost double check or verify what you should know or should have been told. So take a look at the patient counseling information and read it. Number four on our list of the top seven things everyone should know about their drug labels is always look at what the drug was approved to treat. Now you can find this early on in the drug label information or medication guide, and it may even be found in the section called indication and usage. As a matter of fact, I know it can be found there. And the reason why I'm asking you to do this is because in the U.S., it is common and perfectly legal for your doctor or healthcare provider to prescribe you a drug for one condition when it wasn't quite approved for that very same condition by the FDA. It's actually a very controversial topic that deserves its own dedicated episode in the future. Um, But the reason why this makes our list as number four is because I want you to find out whether or not you are being prescribed a drug off-label or for an unapproved use. The logic behind this off-label prescribing practice is that there's probably some other research study 
hopefully a strong research study that is performed or has been performed or released after a drug is approved to show it has benefit for other illnesses or conditions. And this is accepted then by the medical community. Or maybe your doctor has decided to give you something off label because nothing else is working for you or because there aren't many drugs available to treat your condition or illness. Regardless of the reason, some researchers have found that when you take a medication off label, you may have a higher likelihood for adverse drug reactions versus if you took it on label or for what the FDA approved the drug to be treated for in the first place. So this makes number four on our list because there's a chance that your doctor didn't mention they were giving you a drug off label. And if you're receiving this medication off label and your doctor or healthcare provider didn't tell you this was being done before they prescribed it, then I want you to talk with him or her to find out why they were prescribing it to you off label. What's the body of evidence that strongly proves it will be beneficial to you? Also, I want you to let them know that for now on, you want them to point out to you when a drug is being prescribed off label before you take that first dose. So if you are receiving this medication off label and your doctor or healthcare provider did not tell you this was being done before they prescribed it, then have a conversation with him or her to find out why they were prescribing it to you off label. Was there some sort of strong research study that proved it would help you um, or help someone like you? Okay, number three, you may be looking at an out of date label. That's right, a label that is not up to date. So drugs are researched during clinical trials over a period of years. And what sample size of subjects is likely to occur in a clinical trial is probably going to be way smaller than what will actually be exposed to the drug once it's approved by the FDA to be sold and marketed in the U.S. Meanwhile, the nature of clinical research is that the subjects are essentially handpicked. There's a lot of oversight, many different people watching these trials, um, particularly in regards to the safety of each patient. And it's just what I like to call more of a controlled environment where every adverse reaction or event, serious or non-serious, is watched and documented. So fast forward to when the drug is on the market and now it's in the general public, it's not a very small highly controlled environment anymore. And it's now being given to possibly millions of people all around the country, and some possibly due to off-label prescribing. And it may not be the target population the drug was intended to treat in the first place. So those with responsibility for drug safety and protecting the public may start to receive alerts or see trends that hint at a possible new concern or relevant notation about the drug that now should be on the label, but is not. So that means the label needs to be updated. Now, the problem is that drug labels are not updated quickly. Um, This happens for various logistical reasons, and some even say due to lack of enforcement issues, Um, but they don't happen quickly. Now, when you're looking at the U.S., government's code of federal regulations. Um, There's a section um, called 201.56A2, and it reads, quote, the labeling must be informative and accurate and neither promotional in tone nor false or misleading in any particular. In accordance with 314.70 and 601.12 of this chapter, The labeling must be updated when new information becomes available that causes the labeling to become inaccurate, false, or misleading. So right there in our CFR or our Code of Federal Federal Regulations, it tells you what the expectation is um, by law, by regulation, when it comes to drug labels. Um, But there's challenges with with that particular um, mandate that clearly allow some labels to be out of date and out of date for some time before they're updated and uh, available to the public. Now, last comment on this number three. 
Since you could be reading an out-of-date label, it may be best to not just rely on only the patient prescription information sheet from your pharmacy or the medication guide found at the accessdata.fda.gov website alone. You may want to review both to compare if you notice any discrepancies. And if you do, contact your pharmacy, your doctor, or your drug manufacturer of the product for more information. Um, Another note, apparently you can access the updates to drug labels that have been completed on the FDA's website by simply going to their drug safety labeling changes page and clicking on the link to visit the database for those changes. I took a look at the page and it looks like this was made available since 2016. And um, I'll include a link to it in the show notes for you to check it out. But um, bottom line, if you read your label, know that it could also be an out-of-date version. Number two on our list is to always check for any black box warnings. So while warnings and precautions are expected to be listed on any drug label where applicable, it is those special black box warnings that precede the warnings and precautions that I really want you to pay attention to. So started in 1979, box warnings or black box warnings were things that the FDA would require a drug company to place on their labels under certain circumstances. And these warnings became known as the FDA's strongest warning issue for drugs still in the market and legal to be prescribed. Now, it's not uncommon for these black box warnings to be required additions to drug labels after some sort of confirmed safety signals or post-marketing clinical data has been released, verified and validated. And if you have a black box warning on your drug label, then it may be there to point out any serious ADRs or adverse drug reactions that may outweigh the benefits of the drug or may cause a serious reaction. Or when a drug may come with very strict prescribing restrictions. Black box warnings are typically shown early on in the drug label. And you can find these by looking for the word warning in capitalized letter with that word and the text that follows, all of it being surrounded or outlined in black. So the warning is in box in black, outlined, hence its name. And there are a lot of drugs out there with black box warnings. So for example, uh, if I use the Invocamed example again, um, this is a drug that does have a black box warning. Uh, Looking at the labeling, it has in, in, in capitalized letters, warning, Then it says lactic acidosis and lower limb amputation. And then it goes into detail on each one to tell you exactly why those two uh, risk or safety warnings were added to the label as a black box warning. And number one on our list of the top seven things that everyone should know about their drug labels at a minimum is not All side effects are listed on the patient prescription information sheet you receive from your pharmacist or even on the drug labels or medication guides that can be found on the FDA's website or in the drug's packaging. So there's an FDA guidance out there on what should versus what should not be on a drug label. And you may be surprised about what isn't or required or mandated by law, but the bottom line is drug manufacturers aren't required to list every single side effect or adverse drug reaction that has been observed during clinical research trials. In this guidance, under a section called General Principles for Selecting and Characterizing Data in the Adverse Reaction section, you'll find very clearly in the guidance that, according to the FDA, quote, the definition of adverse reactions does not include all adverse events observed during use of a drug. It is limited to those events for which there is some basis to believe there is a causal relationship between occurrence of an adverse event and the use of a drug. It goes on to say that decisions on whether there is some basis to believe there is a causal relationship are a matter of judgment, end quote. 
And then it goes on to list all those different factors in the guidance. So pay attention to any undesired effect that is happening to your body, because that's really the, the definition that they want folks to refer to in adverse drug reaction, a side effect, any undesired effect that's happening to your body um, while you're taking a medication and bring it to your healthcare provider's attention because um, just because it's not listed on the label does not mean that it may not be an adverse drug reaction uh, of, of, of significance and relevance um, that shouldn't be reported. So just to recap our list, our top seven things that everyone should know about the drug labels at a minimum. Number seven, you should receive a drug label every single time. Number six, you should read one every time. Number five, take a look at the patient counseling information section. Number four, Always look for what the drug was approved to treat in the indications and usage section. Number three, you may be looking at an out-of-date label. Number two, always check for black box warnings. And the number one thing, not every side effect is listed on a label, so please keep that in mind. All right, so before you go, speaking of side effects or adverse drug reactions, and this is something we'll get into more in future episodes, but did you know that there's a serious underreporting of side effects in America? It's true, and it's mainly because reporting is sadly based on a voluntary reporting system, which is a shame because without the information on how drugs are performing, the FDA is limited on what they can do to provide nationwide oversight and enforcement on drug safety and issue timely warnings and actions for public benefit. Now, when I say it's voluntary, I'm really referring to patients and healthcare providers. There's no mandate for us to report this. There is a mandate for drug manufacturers in their normal course of business. But anyway, Neither here nor there. The bottom line is underreporting. So depending on who you ask or what you read, you may be told to report your side effects directly to the pharmaceutical company or your doctor or healthcare provider. And that's fine. But here's something even better. You can report directly to the FDA, which will ensure that your voice is heard and all the information that needs to be given to the FDA is really provided to them. To learn more about how you can easily report your side effects directly to the FDA, visit our website at www.overprescribedpodcast.com. We'll also try to ensure you can access the information from our show notes. There are several ways to report your side effects to the FDA. You can print out a form, complete it, and you can mail it in or fax it to the FDA, or you can just go to their website and submit your report electronically as a consumer. You can even have someone submit a report for you. And a quick tip, give yourself at least five to 10 minutes to complete your report and have the drug or drugs with you so that you can have the proper spelling, dosage information, et cetera, right at your fingertips. And if you decide to report directly to the FDA, always talk with your doctor too, so that they're informed and that they can document your reporting from their side as well. 